good morning. Um, miss you guys even more than I missed you yesterday, but we are going to continue on our mini lessons for using strong verbs in our writing. Sorry, I had a brain fart there. All right, so again, you've done your reading ticket. I'm ringing the doorbell. You're coming to the carpet. You're getting with your teams. High five your face partner. High five your shoulder partner. I need your knees on me. Oh, I'm so glad you sang it. All right, so yesterday we read, or we started talking about strong verbs, writers using strong verbs in their in their writing so that us as we as readers can get a vivid picture in our head instead of saying someone ran somewhere saying something like they darted somewhere um so it just makes your it gives you a more visual image of what the writer is trying to get across to you so we did a quick mini lesson you sorted verbs eight was a weak verb and then munched was a was a strong verb um and then we read jumanji and you had to listen for five strong verbs that chris van Allsburg used in his writing and then you had to put that into a google form so now what we're going to do is we're going to look at yes we i think as readers and writers, we are able to look at verbs and say, ah, oh, yeah, that's like one that I would have used when I was in third grade. Or, hey, that's a fifth grade strong verb. But I think the hardest part for writers is choosing which one to use. So when I have the verb run, which verb, there's 50 of them out there, probably more than that, which verb can I use to take the place of run? Like, what is the message that I'm trying to get across to people? Um, so we're going to practice that a little bit. And then you guys will have a, you're going to have a Jumanji excerpt. We're going to have to identify the verbs, the strong verbs in there. And then you're going to have a Google form that you have to fill out. That's a drop down and you have to choose the correct strong verb that makes the sentence better and it still makes sense. So let's start with um, some examples. So I'm going to shrink me down here. There I am. All right, so I have two sentences that I'm just going to model for you. We have the, so first off, this powerful verbs paper should be on your Google Classroom. Now, I think it's on assignment um, number four for powerful verbs or strong verbs. And you can print it out if you want so that you can reference it later. Um, or you can just save it on your computer and come back to it. Because you're probably going to want to use it some in your writing over the next week or two. Um, so I'm going to use this as my reference today. We're going to get into using a thesaurus, but I'm not going to get there just yet. I'm just going to use the ones that I have in front of me. So, and then I'm going to practice using these two sentences over here. So what we're trying to do is we're trying to create a picture in the, re in the reader's mind. We want them to understand what is going on. Those strong verbs give emotions to people. So this is the part where I would say, give me some examples of strong verbs. Oh, Penny, yep, there you go. Oh, Jackson, narrowed, oh, yep, there you go. Oh, Kayla, napped, yep, there you go. Catch your Skittles, you would be catching them. Some of you would be dropping them and chasing after them, but that's okay. So you got your Skittles, you turned to your shoulder partner, I've had you list two or three strong verbs. We've shared them out. Now we're going to come to sentence number one that we're going to practice with, this sentence right here. Chris said, let's go for some ice cream. So we are trying to replace the word said with a strong or a powerful verb. Now on this sheet over here, I have several strong verbs for said, told, or yell. So I've got to figure out what emotion I want the reader to understand. So Chris said, let's go for some ice cream. So when I think about ice cream, me personally, um, I love ice cream, chocolate chip cookie dough. What's your favorite? So I'm thinking chocolate chip cookie dough. Mm, I've been stuck in the house for two days. I should send my husband out to go get some. It's like an excited emotion for me. So when I'm 
choosing a strong verb for the word said, I'm not going to choose something like argued or answered or described when I look at these verbs or mumbled. I'm definitely not going to mumble, let's go get some ice cream. I am going, it, it needs to be an emotional one. Like, I really want it. So I might plead it, I think I saw down here. Yeah, pleaded. Chris pleaded, let's go for some ice cream. Like, I just want to get out of the house. Um, or maybe it, I demanded. I probably wouldn't actually, you know, I might get it still, but my husband probably wouldn't be very happy with me if I demanded that we go get some ice cream. Um, so what I want you to do now, or what I would do now, is I want you to pause the video. I want you to look through this list of said, told, yell synonyms or powerful verbs, and I want you to choose one that you think would get the message across. Are you wanting the reader to feel like you're excited and like really want that ice cream? Or are you disgusted by ice cream? And although I don't know why he would say let's go get some ice cream if he was disgusted, but what kind of verb would you put in place of said? So pause it if you need to, take a second to look through that list. Which one would you choose? Me right now? I actually, hold on, time out. Let's take some, some suggestions. All right, Keegan, what do you choose? Oh, yep, here's your Skittle. I like that one. Okay, Bryson, what do you choose? There's Skittle. Nice catch. All right, Rachel, what do you choose? There you go. Oh, good throw, Miss Sigmund. Hey, Rachel, I'll take that red one back. You can give that to me. Thanks. I don't eat that Skittle, please. Okay, thanks. All right, so the one that I would choose, given the situation, I so badly want to get out of the house, I would probably say pleaded. Chris pleaded. Let's go for some ice cream. Like begging someone. So there's several options that you should choose there. Um, drop in the comments when you are when on this assignment. Tell me which one you chose. All right, and then number two, Caitlin walked up to the candy store. So again, you're trying to, let's see, yes, I have walked here. Um, you're trying to paint an image, you're trying to, to let the reader know what feelings Caitlin has about going to this candy store by the verb that you choose. So how is Caitlin feeling about walking to the candy store? Does she hate candy? So is she like walking slowly and just trudging along inch to the candy store? Um, or is she like, hey, I'm ready for some candy. Like, I'm ready to get me some red and ye yellow Skittles mixed, or I need some Hershey Kisses. Better yet, a Reese's Peanut Butter Cup. I'm just saying, when we see each other in a couple weeks, if you want to bring me some, I'd be all right with that. So what emotion are you trying to get across with Caitlin going to the candy store? So I want you to look at some of our verbs for walk. You're likely not going to choose one out of walk slowly because I wouldn't imagine that a child is walking slowly to a candy store. What emotion are you trying to get across about Caitlin and the candy store? Pause the video and choose one verb from walk that you think would get the message across, the feelings of Caitlin going to the candy store across. Pause it and choose. All right, what are some ideas? that we have. So, okay, let's see. Um, who we got? Colby. Oh, mm, I like that one. Okay. Skittle for you. Let's do one more. Satali. Okay. There you go. There's your Skittle. Nice throw, Miss Sigmund. You're welcome. All right. The one that I chose is I put skipped because I'm thinking of a little girl who's just so excited to get up to the candy store. So Caitlin skipped up to the candy store. That's something you do when you're excited. All right, so today, what we did was talked about powerful verbs, strong verbs, and I know you're jealous. Um, strong verbs and how they make your writing so much stronger. They let the reader paint a picture in their mind. They feel what the character is feeling. So what you're going to do now, once you're done, once you exit out of here, is you're going to use the Jumanji passage. You're going to highlight the verbs. There's a video with it so that um, if you don't know how to highlight 
words in Google Doc. I put a video there to show you. And then you're going to do the Google form and choose the correct powerful verb that still makes each sentence make sense. And you're going to submit that. That is your only grammar assignment for today. So, I love you, but get out.